Recently, the self-proclaimed largest Muslim channel on YouTube asked its subscribers to report anti-Islamic channels for hate speech in an attempt to censor critics. Today, I'll examine the hypocrisy of this request, the Muslim response to it, and why many Muslims are so afraid of criticism. On June 7, 2019, the Merciful Servant posted the following request to its 2.5 million subscribers. As Muslims, we are against hate speech of all kinds. The people of the scripture and the polytheists are the worst of creatures. Our religion encourages us to speak and preach with the best of manners. The Messenger of Allah instructed us. Tell him to bite his father's male member and do not use a metaphor. Yesterday, YouTube implemented new community guidelines which will cause thousands of anti-Islamic channel to be banned from YouTube. Thousands of channels? I doubt there's even thousands of channels that talk about Islam on YouTube let alone thousands that criticize Islam. But hey, it ends at an exclamation point, and it's almost grammatically correct, so it must be true. They continue. Over the years, we've seen many channels promoting hate against the Muslim community, and after the recent New Zealand attack, the world has finally realized that this kind of speech is not justified in any way, shape, or form. All these far-right and hate-preaching channels will be removed from YouTube permanently. So I encourage our viewers to report all the channels they are aware of that are openly promoting hate against any religion or race. Sure sounds like a thinly veiled request for its members to flag any and all anti-Islamic channels. Can you imagine a large Christian channel making a similar request? I can't. And if one did try, there would be massive backlash from both non-Christians and from within the Christian community. But maybe I'm misreading the post. Let's see how their subscribers took the post. With over 12,000 likes, the post itself seems to have created quite a reaction. Let's look at some of the comments. There was this channel called Apostate Prophet. He is an ex-Muslim who spreads hate about Islam and makes money on that. He had a hundred thousand plus something subs. Now I just clicked his channel and I think it has been removed. Finally, his temporary fun is over, but his sins from all these actions remain. 281 likes. Side note, Poste Prophet definitely has not been banned. Bye bye, Act 17 Apologetics. 263 likes. Guys, report introverted smiles. An ex Muslim spreading hate about Islam. 548 likes. Apostate Prophet is one of those hate preachers along with Act 17 Apologetics. And also report Abdul Samir and Harris Sultan. All of them shameless leers and open deceivers. Report their videos, go to their channel, check for offensive title, and report their specific 2-3 videos. Yeah, don't bother watching the videos. Just assume they contain hate and report them. 213 likes. I recently saw a channel. I immediately reported it. Abdullah Beg. He was some ex-Muslim and was spreading so much hate about Islam. I was so heartbroken. I know I shouldn't be, but seeing such things about my beautiful religion sometimes makes me so sad. 81 likes. Ah, finally, here is someone who disagrees with the crowd. Guys, banning hate speech means we cannot make videos, etc. against homosexuality and other forms of degeneracy. This is a two-way street. Do not support this. Maybe not the best motive, but at least he recognizes the dangers of censorship. It starts with your enemies, but it's easily spread to you. 56 likes. 
Please report Satya Sanatan. This is an Indian channel insulting Muslim and Islam. Illiterate and uneducated people are main subscriber, as illiteracy is high in India. Oh, the irony. They call it a banned hate speech that calls an entire country of people illiterate and educated. And isn't that also an insult to the illiterate and uneducated Muhammad? Maybe this guy should report himself for attacking both India and Muhammad. 32 likes. Okay, here's someone who is against banning honest criticism. If it is a fact, it doesn't mean it is hate speech. But if that just a mere irrational opinion without any proofs, then it's hate speech. Some people kind of confused about hate speech thingy. About mocking Islam or labeling Islam as a religion of terrorists, rapists, or criminals. It is obviously a hate speech. But some people out there use this hate speech thingy to ban some facts. Like when Muslim talk about other religions are fake, some people think that Muslims spread in hate. Of course, it is not. It's a fact. So, if it's anti-Islamic, it's obviously hate speech. But if it's criticism of some other religion, it's just a fact. Great logic. 25 likes. And then after you scroll through a couple more pages of comments, you do finally start to find a few people who realize the implications of what Merciful Servant is calling for. Okay, but I have, I'm almost 100% sure they'll come after you and other Islamic channels soon too. Banned. If it can happen to them, it can happen to you. 11 whole likes. And that's the top one. So over 500 votes to take down criticism of Islam, and just 11 to be reasonable. Pretty clear where most of Merciful Servant's followers stand on this issue. Just for completeness, let's look at some of the other channels they went banned. Can people report Jacqueline Glenn channel, please? She's an atheist who spreads hate about our religion and race, which is totally illegal. Um, Jacqueline pretty much just attacks Christianity, but okay. The Endless Love of Jesus Christ Missionaries channel shows be banned. They promote hate speech and false information about Islam and Catholicism, calling them evil people. Report this woman, Julie Mora. She spread lies about Islam. I hope PragerU is banned. PragerU? Seriously? Non-religious educational videos are now hate speech against Islam. Okay, I think that's enough. To be fair, I haven't watched every video made by these channels, and some of them I've never heard of. But I have watched hundreds of criticisms of Islam on dozens of channels, and I've never seen one that actually promotes hate speech or a race-based attack. So why are some Muslims so eager to ban material they don't like? My first thought was that they know that Islam can't really stand up to scrutiny. Due to the bold claims Muslims make, it is amazingly easy to disprove Islam. For example, most Muslims believe the Quran is word for word perfectly preserved through a miracle of Allah. However, all one has to do is compare any two manuscripts to see that this is pure myth. The myth exists because Muslim leaders care more about the false confidence of perfect preservation than they do about actually knowing the original words of the Quran. On reflection, however, this seems to be a poor explanation as most Muslims actually think that the evidence for Islam is quite strong. Of course, they haven't actually looked at any of the evidence, but they do think it's strong. Then I noticed that several popular critics of Islam were not targeted, such as Fander Films and Christian Prince. The inclusion of Jacqueline Glenn is the key to understanding the difference. I could only find three videos she's ever done about Islam, among hundreds and hundreds that attack Christianity. 
However, one of those three videos contains an ugly cartoon monster that is said to be a portrait of Muhammad. Thus, it seems that what really bothers Muslims is not criticism of Islam per se, but rather mockery of Muhammad. Why is that? The answer is obvious. Although every Muslim would deny it, Muslims treat Muhammad as a god. He is supposedly just a human messenger, yet his name alone, among allegedly thousands of messengers, is elevated beside Allah's in the Shahada. He has 99 names, just like Allah. His earliest followers collected his sweat and spit, or at least made up stories about doing so later, to use as cologne. Muhammad is said to be the perfect example for all of humanity to follow. But who wants to follow an ordinary man rather than God Almighty? Indeed, when Muhammad does something that's obviously wrong, suddenly it becomes right. His name is invoked in worship. For example, the Muslim call to prayer invokes Muhammad's name right along Allah's five times a day. The Quran commands believers to ask Muhammad to intercede for forgiveness. Later Muslim texts even claim that he was created before Adam and that all of creation was made for him. So, an attack on Muhammad is not merely an attack on an ordinary human being who happened to be chosen by God, as Muslims say of their mouths, but rather an attack on their true object of affection, the demigod Muhammad, as Muslims reveal with their actions. Having discovered the cause of Muslim outrage, let's look at those new guidelines, or more accurately, the minor tweaks to the existing guidelines. YouTube explains, Today we're taking another step in our hate speech policy by specifically prohibiting videos alleging that a group is superior in order to justify discrimination, segregation, or exclusion based on qualities like age, gender, race, caste, religion, sexual orientation, or veteran status. This would include, for example, videos that promote or glorify Nazi ideology which is inherently discriminatory. I have never seen any Christian YouTuber claim Christians are superior to Muslims. I have never seen any ex-Muslim claim that believing in Islam makes anyone inferior. And I have certainly never heard any YouTube channel equate Muslims with Arabs and say Arabs are inferior to other people groups or anything remotely like that. If anyone behaves that way, they are violating the teachings of Jesus and do not represent Christianity. I have, however, seen some supremacist thoughts somewhere else. The prophet says, All of the mighty and majestic sifted through his creation and chose the Banu Adam from them. Then he sifted through the Banu Adam and chose the Arabs from them. Then he sifted through the Arabs and chose the Quraysh from them. Then he sifted through the Quraysh and chose the Banu Hassam from them. Then he sifted through the Banu Hassam and chose me from them. I am the best of the best. So here we have Muhammad claiming that the Arabs are the best of the children of Adam. That is, the best race of people, and that his tribe is the best tribe of the Arabs. I'm not really a fan of censorship, but the merciful servant demands I report any hate and we wouldn't want to think they hypocritically exclude hate by Muslims, right? So I have no choice but to report this to YouTube. But maybe it's just one anomaly in Qadi Ayad, so I'll report him to be safe. Here's what noted theologian Ibn Taymiyyah had to say on the matter. The Arabs deserve love and loyalty more than other races from the children of Adam. And this is, of course, the opinion of the majority of the scholars. The people of theological rhetoric are of the view that there is no excellence or preference of one race over another. But this is a weak view. It is the view of the innovators. Well, I can't let racial supremacy like that go unreported. Let's take a look at al-Bakari the gold standard of authentic words of Muhammad. 
Once, Allah's apostles said, O oh, women, give alms, as I have seen that the majority of the dwellers of hellfire were you. I have not seen anyone more deficient in intelligence and religion than you. Sure sounds like Muhammad is claiming women are inherently inferior to men, but that can't be right. Let's look at another one just to be sure. Allah's apostles said, The woman is like a rib. If you try to straighten her, she will break. So if you want to get benefit from her, do so while she still has some crookedness. Did you catch that? Muhammad is saying if you try to make a woman morally straight, you'll break her. That is, women are inherently immoral by nature and beyond correction. Wow. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to report you, Muhammad, for hate speech against women. What about the Quran? Surely it doesn't contain hate speech. After all, it's supposed to be the word-for-word -word dictation of Allah. His similitude is that of a dog. If you attack him, he lulls out his tongue. Or if you leave him alone, he still lulls out his tongue. That is the similitude of those who reject our signs. So people who reject Allah, that is, non-Muslims, are like dogs. Interesting. And what are Muslims to do about this? Fight those who believe not in Allah until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. So the Quran advocates for the subjection of one group of people to another, with violence if necessary. And Muslims aren't supposed to stop this violence until the people feel themselves in subjection to the Muslim. That sure sounds like the kind of thing YouTube is against, if you ask me. What about the Quran on women? Your women are a tillage for you, so come onto your tillage as you wish. The meaning is a little obscured from the archaic language, but what the Quran is saying is that women are nothing more than a field for men to plant their seeds in. In other words, Women are the property of men to be used for sexual pleasure. And what survey of the Quran would be complete without some anti-Semitic conspiracy theory? You will surely find the most intense of the people in animosity towards the believers to be the Jews. It be among the Jews men who will listen to any lie. So it seems clear that I must report the Quran as requested by Merciful Servant. Update. While I was working on this video, David Wood released one on the same subject. Within a few hours, Merciful Servant posted a public reply. Yesterday, an anti-Islamic channel called Act 17 Apologetics made a video against us calling us censorship jihadis. We asked our viewers to report any channels that violate these new terms, but we did not name or attack any individuals in our post. It is technically true that they didn't name names, but the fact they instantly noticed David's video makes it pretty obvious they're keeping a close eye on him and likely had him in mind when they made the post to begin with. Merciful Servant, your obsession with David is not healthy. If you don't like his videos, refute him. Calling for your opponents to be banned from YouTube is indeed censorship jihad. If that offends you, then don't engage in such behavior. Now let's compare what Muhammad and the Quran teach to what Christianity teaches. For the Lord your God is God of gods, and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, he shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, Here's a good seat for you, but you say to the poor man, You stand there 
or sit on the floor by my feet? Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? If you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. So in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith, for all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. The Christian God created everyone equal, loves everyone equally, and sacrificed himself on the cross for the forgiveness of everyone's sins. He commands us to do likewise. Muslims, we Christians don't hate you, not even a little bit. We love you and want you to know the love of the true God who values all equally, not the fake God who discriminates against women and non-Muslims, and does not love you unless you first love him. Through Christ Jesus, all are loved and forgiven. All you have to do is accept what God has already done for you to experience his love for yourself. Please do consider the true God who is calling you home. Thanks for watching.